Exercise 12. Begin by going to File, Open. Find the SOLIDWORKS Advanced, Sample Files, Exercise 12. It should look blank. What you need to do is down here under Files of Type, hit the little arrow, and find DWG. We're going to import a DWG AutoCAD file, which is a two-dimensional format, into SOLIDWORKS and create a 3D model from it. And you'll find the exercise 12, select it, and hit open. The next option here allows you to select from edited in, in the DWG editor, which is basically a light version of AutoCAD, but it's not AutoCAD, it's from another company known as IntelliCAD, but very similar product and that's completely separate from SOLIDWORKS, but it's SOLIDWORKS throws it in there for you. We're not going to use that today. Uh, you also have the option of creating a new SOLIDWORKS drawing. This is, you could actually bring in a uh, sheet, like a template, with your borders and everything like that from AutoCAD, and bring it into SOLIDWORKS, or you could actually convert it to SOLIDWORKS uh, parts, and we're going to actually do that today. There's another option to import it into a new part file, uh, that too works rather well with SOLIDWORKS, but we're not going to look at that right now. So c right now we're just going to go ahead and create a new SOLIDWORKS drawing and convert to SOLIDWORKS entities. So I'm going to hit next, and here we see a preview of it. Now what we can do here is we could deactivate specific layers before we bring it in. In this case, we don't need to see the dimensions. We don't need to see the annotations or cross-hatching or the template or even the defining points. We could hit next again and we'll see that SOLIDWORKS automatically tries to determine what size sheet it is, in this case a B landscape, we'll leave it at that. We can modify it or change it if we wanted to drop it on a different sheet. Also make sure that you know what type of scale you're at. You might actually want to bring it entirely in without turning off those layers just so you could have a look and make sure that the scale is correct. In this case, we're going to go ahead and leave it at the one-to-one. -one. And the position we'll leave as well. I'm going to hit Finish. And now it brings it into a drawing. And here we just have the basics of the geometry from our imported AutoCAD file. What we need to do now, we're going to steal some of this geometry and use it for a 3D model. Now be aware that Depending upon whoever drew this, it might not be accurate because AutoCAD gives the user the ability to modify the dimensions without actually modifying the geometry itself. So be aware of that. In this case, I trust the geometry. We're going to go ahead and use it. What we can do here is we could steal information. In other words, I'm going to take this. This is, was a section view that ran through the wheel. And this has a lot of information that could help us create it. It has the profile of a revolved feature. And it even has a center line so we could locate that. So let's grab all that by clicking and dragging a little fence around it. And now we could go to File. I'm sorry, actually go to Edit and Copy. Or Control-C is the fast key. Now we go to File New and create a new part file. And we could select what plane we want to drop that in on. Now remember that was a, uh, a section view from the front of the wheel. So technically that's like a right side view. So let's drop it in on the right plane. So we'll select the right plane and we could go to Edit, Paste or Control V as in Victor. Now we don't see anything right off the hand, but if we hit the F key, remember F is for fit, we see our geometry. One thing we might want to do though, is we want to find the origin. We'll lock everything into the origin just so we have a nice clean model to work with. So let's turn on our origins. Go to File, or I'm sorry, go to View, and turn on Origins, and there it is down there. Now we could actually edit this sketch. We see the sketch in the feature tree over here. We just right click and find edit sketch. It's a little button up here. Select that and now we can actually see it there. 
Now here's the trick. We want to get this over here locked in. There just so happens to be, I believe, a point right in the center. If not, we could have drawn one and locked it into the center of that line, the center line. But let's try this now. I'm going to select it just by clicking and dragging a fence around the entire geometry. And the next thing I want to do is I want to hold the control key down for most of this process. So while holding the control key, I get onto that little point that was there, hold the left mouse button down, and continue to drag this close to the origin. Now I could actually drag it right up there. But before I complete that, if I continue to hold down the control key and release this, I'll have a duplicate copy. But maybe I don't want to have to go back and delete that extra copy that's left over behind. So I'm going to release the control key before I finish dropping it. And it actually just moves it. I'm going to hit the F key on the keyboard for zoom to fit. Make sure I'll go normal too here. If I hit rebuild and then F, it'll zoom to fit. Now we can right click on that again and go to edit sketch. Okay, from here we could add our own dimensions. There is also the ability to add automatic dimensions. We could go to, inst uh, to tools and there's dimensions and we could have it automatically add dimensions. Or we could add relations as well. In this case, we're going to leave it alone. We're just going to go ahead and go to Features on the Features tab, go to Revolve Boss Space, and it creates our wheel for us with that profile. It actually ended up taking the center line that was in the drawing and revolving around that. Now we're almost done. What we need to do is go back to the drawing and take one of those profiles of the cutout and bring that over here. So let's do that. A quick way to get back to the drawing if you have multiple documents or if you're working with multiple documents is hold the uh, control key and hit tab and then you can toggle between them. And now I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these holes. One trick I could do is right click on it on one of the edges of the hole and we'll find select chain. That will grab the geometry that's all touching. And now I could go ahead and go to edit, copy, or control C. Now I could hit control and tab again. Uh, actually, uh, seem to have lost my other document. Here we go. Sitting in behind it. So I'm just going to minimize that. Usually control and tab toggles between the two. For some reason it didn't seem to work here. But let's go ahead and now we're going to select the front plane. So I selected that and I hit edit paste or control V. If I hit the F key for zoom to fit I can now see that's floating out there. Now what's great about this is that the profile here of this outside arc is actually the full profile of the model. It follows that and the center point is located there so technically I could drag that center point over here and lock it in. Let's do that. I'm going to right click, edit sketch, and I'm going to hold the control key down. Actually I'm going to release it for a second. I forgot to select in a grouping that geometry first. So I just release control for a second, drag the little fence around the geometry. Now I could hold control after it's selected, grab that center point, and drag it right to the origin. Now remember the little trick, release control first, and then release the geometry. Now I'm going to zoom up a little bit, and we could go ahead and go back to features and extrude cut. Now with the extrude cup, we want to go through all, but you'll notice that's in the center of the model so that the through only goes through one side of the plane that you're selected. So we have to click on direction 2 on the left here for the second direction. Again, make sure that's set to through all. 
and hit the green check mark. Now looking back at the drawing, we could go to the fillet tool and put in our 0.25 fillets and drop that in. Actually, I think they're 0.2 and hit enter. And now we could pattern those. We're going to go to view and turn on temporary axes so we can see our axis for the pattern. And we're going to find over here under linear pattern, if we hit the arrow below it, we'll find circular pattern. Select circular pattern. And here it's looking for the pattern axis that's right here in the center of the model. And then click on equal spacing and add five instances and hit the green check. Well, before we do that, we do see a preview of the fillets. But if we were to apply this, we'd actually probably get an error message because it's incomplete. We need to make sure we select the actual hole. Oops. Uh, make sure here, I gotta click on the proper pattern axis. Click on the features to pattern, and then select one of the inside faces of the hole. Otherwise, you could click up here and find the extrude one, which was the cut extrude. Hit the green check mark to apply it. And there is our wheel. And that ends exercise 12.